All right, designers, do you want to see an industrial design student's year four work? Do you want to see my industrial design student year four work? I'm going to go ahead and jump into the computer and show you guys some of my very old year four industrial design work at Cal State Long Beach out of pretty much a five year program. So you're probably wondering why not year three, Jimmy, or year two or year one, you know? So uh, I actually have made those videos already. Uh, uh, right here, so year one, uh, which I made four years ago, and year two, which I made four years ago, so links should be down in the description, and then I think year three, I ended up making uh, two years ago right here. So I split it up into two different videos. Each year at Cal State Long Beach, it's split up into two different semesters. So this is gonna be fall semester and then uh, spring semester. I'll link those down in the description, but let's go ahead and jump into year four. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my year four. This is pretty much an old hard drive that I had with all my student work. And uh, I've essentially shown you guys all of my work from year one, and now I'm gonna show you guys year four. So if you're wondering how is industrial design uh, school is like, what do they teach you? You know, what, what are the work am I gonna provide my professors and all that kind of stuff? You know, watch these videos because I think it'll be, um, it'll pretty much answer those questions that you have. If you guys don't know, year one and year three, at Cal State Long Beach is essentially uh, pretty much just building up your core, you know, like skills of industrial design, very, very uh, technical skills, learning how to use Photoshop and Illustrator, learning how to draw if you don't know how to draw yet, uh, learning how to use SolidWorks for the very first time, creating renderings. So you're learning all of these very technical skills in, in pretty much your first one through three years. And then once you get up into your third year, what you're supposed to do is submit for portfolio re review, where essentially you put all of your work that you've worked on these past three years uh, into a show. You pretty much curate it, you know, redo some work, make sure that it looks great. And essentially a faculty of the um, the faculty, the pretty much design faculty goes in and judges the work and uh, pretty much determines if you can pass or not. And once if you pass, you can pretty much jump into year four, where essentially you are now in studio, where you're putting all the, the skills that you learned together to design actual full on thorough products. If you didn't pass, then you know you have to try again. And I think you'll only get like two tries and uh, you have to wait for like a whole year to, to try each time. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much how Cal State Long Beach works. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into year four and I'm going to jump into fall. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss spring because uh, I'll be making that video next week. But let's go ahead and jump into fall and uh, pretty much I've taken four classes here, guys. So um, these two are pretty much your core studio classes, these two. And then these two are just elective classes that I decided to take because um, I was still receiving financial aid at the time and uh, I needed to have a full-time student unit, so I needed more units. So I pretty much essentially just took a lot of extra classes, uh, but I really only really needed to take these two. We jump into CNC, not a very important class, guys. Uh, again, it was like a one unit class. And um, they pretty much just taught us how to use a CNC. We kind of ran through it, you know, like an hour uh, once a week kind of a deal. What was interesting about this class is that uh, one of the projects he had us do was when you're an industrial designer, you're, you're creating products, right? And when you create some kind of a 3D model, eventually you're going to need to have it made. You're going to need to have it 3D printed or CNC'd or, you know, injection molded or something like that, right? So uh, what they wanted you to do was to create and design something. So I think I just took this off of one of the products that I designed for another class. And then they have you make a quote. They have you make a purchase order. They have you make a request for a quote. And they have to make you make an invoice. So these are, I think, I guess, the four um, standardized uh, files that you would use in order to, you know, accomplish this kind of a method to get a quote for a product. So he wanted us to kind of do this during um, us being still students to just kind of get a little bit of experience of doing it ourselves. So these are all kind of like that. I don't want to show you guys them because um, it has some personal information. I think I could show you this one. Just got a quote from these people here on, on the product and you know, you, you pretty much try to get like different kind of MOQs because the more that you buy, the cheaper it is. So like a 200, 200 parts would be only $9. 
uh, compared to 50 parts would be $14 each. So of course, the more the parts that you buy, the cheaper it is generally. So, and then uh, I requested in different kind of materials, like what if brass, what if aluminum, and uh, and then they gave me the prices and the amounts and stuff like that. So I ended up creating it. These are Illustrator files right here. So I made mine in Illustrator. And then a uh, furniture class, which was, I think, a two-unit class. Um, uh, I think we ended up making three different projects. So I ended up making a chair, a shoe rack, and then a clock. So this was my clock. I think I made it out of, um, what do you call this, cork with laser-cut acrylic white pieces. So these are just laser-cut acrylic white pieces. I also laser-cut the cork so that the pieces can inlay inside of them. And then um, I have a trim of white acrylic again. And then I have this white outer wooden, I think this is maple. So, um, and then these are aluminum sheets that I cut out from very thin aluminum sheets. And then um, I ended up just purchasing a clock mechanism that I ended up inserting behind all of this. So I just made this clock here. It worked okay. It, 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 it kind of lost time every once in a while. So I don't have it really anymore. So this is going to be um, the chair project. So this is my chair here that I ended up making. And so uh, just a couple of, you know, classmates and uh, their work. So I'm going to jump out of there. And okay, let's go into the fun stuff, guys. And okay, so let me explain to you guys what methodology in studio is. So methodology is going to be weird, guys. Going into it, don't expect too much, okay? But methodology is one of those things where you go through the experience uh, and that's your learning. It's not really about the things that you end up producing. Like, look at my rendering. Look at my product that I designed. It's more of like, go through the experience and kind of just learn through it. And, you know, you might not get a lot of cool things out of it, but uh, you've learned a lot going through the experience, okay? And then studio is essentially what you would expect industrial design to be. So, um, uh, uh, you know, just regular uh, user experience and rendering and sketching and prototyping and all that, you know, stuff that I usually talk about on the YouTube channel. Okay, so let's just go through it right here. Uh, let's see. So it looks like we have four different projects. The first project is all going to be all about creativity. So this is my group here, uh, Chris, Sam, Joanna, and me. And uh, essentially, we were tasked to it's really weird, guys. You know, they, they give you like a, a paper clip and like like a pipe cleaner and, and they, they pretty much ask you, you know, how do you come up with new ideas, come up with some strategies, some methods and create a video and show us and teach us. So we ended up creating this video here. Um, we ended up creating this video here. It's called the Lost Flash Drive. And we're tr coming up with all these different ideas and writing all this down, creating charts and and then uh, this is a whole production, guys. This video is like 10, 10 minutes long. And, uh, you know, it was a fun video to make. And uh, but at the same time, it's like, well, what do you get out of it? Like, I can't show this to an employer. Like I said to you guys, you know, like a lot of the projects that some of these professors give you, you can't really show them to employers. They're not really like professional, like portfolio pieces. And so that's kind of like what frustrated me a lot because we've spent a lot of time, you know, a lot of effort working on these projects here. OK, uh, so subcultures is going to be pretty much like this. Look at the handout. It's pretty much like designing a product for two very different cultures and so you could essentially so i think what we ended up doing was we picked vegans and we picked korean barbecue owners korean barbecue restaurant owners so one is obviously a non-animal consumer and product consumer and then one is pretty much all about selling animal meat and it's all you can eat kind of a setup. So uh, we pretty much designed a product that um, accommodated both of them. It was called VBQ. It was essentially a restaurant. We interviewed uh, this guy here, um, this vegan here, and then another Korean barber Korean owner. Um, and we essentially came up with this whole process, blah, 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 you know, came up with these renderings here, this uh, three level restaurant. Uh, interior design no exterior design and I really you know don't remember it too much but we said something like you know upstairs you can have some kind of like uh, a garden or whatever I don't know it was ridiculous guys but okay moving on 
uh, project three is going to be all about branding yourself. So it was about like making a resume. And then I think we ended up doing like a personality test. So um, I ended up being INTJ. And then I think you're supposed to write like some goals that you have and some successes that 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 you hope for or something like that. Again, guys, like I said, don't expect too much going into going into this. Okay, what is this video here? So I actually uploaded this video. This is actually my uh, what is industrial design. So um, uh, if you, I'm not going to link it down in the descriptions, but if you want to watch it, go ahead and search it up yourself. It's a very old video that I uploaded a long time ago. And it, this is one of my very first video projects uh, where I created an animation. Full, the whole video is an animation because at the time, all these infographic videos were so popular. And so I ended up making this what is industrial design um, video essentially you know, all completely 100 percent animated we have a whole infographic here too where we talk about the profession of industrial design uh how much we get paid so 70 to 120 and there's a, there's about 40,000 jobs in the united states in 2012 you know so just aspects of industrial design what we do we collaborate you know so just um just like what i guess what is all about industrial design you kind of just learn about it with your team okay then the last one is biomimicry so um, biomimicry is an actual competition, and this is actually going to be, you know, one of the very few real industrial design projects in this class. So uh, I think it's called the Biomimicry Design Challenge, and it happens every year. You could look it up on Google, and essentially you design, you know, just a product that um, is biomimicry based. If you guys don't know what biomimicry is, is essentially just designing products with the study of um, animal life and just systems and nature itself, and applying them um, to your kind of solutions that you come up with with product design. So, uh, we ended up designing a garden. It was called Aqua City Garden, and uh, we ended up actually winning surprisingly because it was a very original idea you know there's other products out there that are like this but essentially it's just if you live in a city there's not a lot of space so you can't really have a large garden to grow a lot of greens and so uh, if is there a solution to you know small apartment dwellings can they still able to grow plants uh, maybe with a wall mounted kind of a product so we ended up designing this kind of like hexagonal wall mounted product um, and you can like grow pretty much greens within these pods and stuff like that. And this is pretty much how it would turn out. You could pretty much mount it onto a wall just like that. And um, and that's how it would look in environment, environmental shots. And this is pretty much how it would work, a cross section of it. Uh, but yeah, we ended up winning. And I think the reason why we won is because uh, there was actually a video for this project. And we called, I think if you look up on YouTube, Aqua City Garden, I'm not going to link it down in the description. You'll be able to find that video, uh, Aqua City Garden. And so uh, we ended up winning it. There was a monetary prize. And uh, so that was nice, you know, did a couple hundred bucks, I think. I think it was a couple thousand bucks that we ended up splitting with the team. Uh, here's my team. It was Matt. Patrick and I think Brian, I think my other buddy Brian were all, were also in this project as well. So us four, and I think uh, it was a couple thousand dollar prize. So we ended up winning a couple hundred after uh, we divided it up. All right, so um, that is pretty much methodology. I wanted to breeze through it quickly because there was not really too much to talk about. All right, so uh, studio again, guys. Like I said, is going to be what you would expect. So. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what I ended up making. So this is pretty much going to be a drill. Um, it's a drill that is uh, more of a hobbies drill that you would use like on a desktop. So instead of using, you know, one of these kind of like very industrial, you know, very large drills that you would use to, you know, build a house with. And the ergonomics of it would be that your elbow would be really high if you're using this kind of a drill at a desk. You know, but uh, with this kind of an ergonomics here that I designed, you know, you could use it in a way where even when you press the buttons in order to activate the spinning uh, rotation, uh, you, you would be able to be in a more natural ergonomic position. Let me take a look at my process book. So this is my process book here. Going through some of the research, blah, blah, blah. Nothing too nice. I really, you know, I think my mindset at the time during my fourth year, I, I ended up getting an internship at this time. And, and I also was working as a, a teacher's assistant and a 3D printing operator. 
And so I had about like three different jobs going on. As, and so um, I really didn't spend like all of my time in school, which I probably should have during my fourth year. I spent all of my time during my first and third year. Uh, but then after my fourth and fifth year, uh, I didn't try at quite as hard because I was um, doing a lot of extracurricular activities such as uh, working and getting freelance gigs and stuff like that. So I feel like my work at school suffered a bit, you know, like my graphics design probably could have been better. Uh, what can you say? You know, it all kind of just worked out. So here's some, you know, rough prototypes and there's a lot of text and the reason is because my professor at the time he just you know they call these things process books you know so you're supposed to document and write a lot of your process and the things that you've done and all that kind of stuff so that's why there's a lot of text that you see and and you know i probably bs'd a lot of the text okay so that but uh, i obviously tried hard with my product so uh, i was really happy with this drill i really liked it a lot and this here was the prototype it actually worked too i think i still have it too piece of data piece of information nothing that's tangible it's all digital and you're supposed to represent it in a physical way so that was pretty much the project was whatever is digital and non-tangible how can you represent it in a physical way to you know have great user experience with you know users and enrich people's lives right so i ended up designing a wallet where um so ugly it's so bad this this uh leather is so bad anyways <laughs> I, ended, I ended up designing this wallet here i honestly guys i really didn't i didn't try too hard with these projects at all um uh i i designed this wallet and essentially there's like a little light and it's linked to your bank and if your bank is low on funds the light will change color indicating how much money you know whatever range that color is representing so if it's like green that means you know you're in the good you have a lot of you know like buffer money you have a lot of extra spare money but if it starts getting red you're getting a little tight maybe you want to stop you know not not buy that extra thing so that was essentially my idea i came out with a whole video on it too obviously tons of videos for year four project three is a wait okay i remember this project so um, here are some of my assets. So here's kind of like the weight, and you could use it in many different ways. So it's kind of like a plate, right? Uh, so you could put your barbell right in the center. There's like these large openings that generally plates have, but they're never large enough to where you could grip the plate comfortably in many different ways. Uh, arrangements so in this situation it has a very long bar at one side there where you can kind of just like use it as like a deadlift so you could kind of see the awkwardness like he has a great grip on the top hand here but with the bottom hand he doesn't have a hole to really you know wrap his thumb around wrap anything around to grip well with this is I think the final rendering 40 pa 45 pound weight I think I ended up calling it the arrow this here can kind of be like a deadlift um, uh, shoulder workout there Another kind of like kettlebell, kettlebell swing here. Um, curls and shoulder shrug kind of a thing. And then, of course, a pull-up bar. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to see spring of year four. And uh, I'll go ahead and make that video next week. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you learned something, definitely go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Also, leave me a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. Any recommendations for the next video? Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, guys, my name is Jimmy, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.